So you finally bagged yourself that big buck, got it home, and processed the meat out? We're going to help you figure out what to do next. Thanks for joining us. So we finally made it to where I have time to process out some burger. I've just been collecting cuts from a bunch of the steaks I've been cutting in a bag and I've got a bunch more burger cuts in the freezer that I need to do this to. I'll just thaw them out and do the same thing. But what you're going to need is about 10 pounds of different cuts of venison, just the loose ends and stuff. You need a nice fillet knife to trim all the fat and connective tissue off, a nice chopping knife so that you can square it up and cube it out so we can grind it easier into burger. You're also going to want a scale and a bowl for the top of your scale so you can collect that meat in there, weigh it out, and know that you're getting the right increments. Because what we're doing is we're going to do about 10% pork loin in with our venison burger. Adding pork adds a little bit of fat to the burger which helps it stay together for burgers and adds a little bit more flavor. You don't have to add pork, you can also just add straight fat, either lard or beef fat or beef. Lots of people do it that way, but we're going to go ahead and use pork tenderloins because they were on sale, and we're going to do a 10 to 1 ratio. You're going to start by taking the different sections you have, the loose ends, and splitting them out so you can get this connective tissue out. Just take your fillet knife. You want to get as much of the fat and connective tissue off of it as you can. You want to end up with little like one by one chunks, anything that will go through a meat grinder. If you've never used a meat grinder before, about two by two cubes, as much as it can handle, it probably prefers one by one. You know, anything about the size of your thumb. That reminds me, safety is super important. You really don't want to get your thumb stuck through a meat grinder, so. Oh, that's mostly fat and connective tissue through there. When you get into these big pieces where you got a lot of connective tissue, you're just going to almost treat it like filleting a fish. You slice in and down. If you're really good, it gives you something to pull, but I am not really good. I'm not even kind of good. There we go. Just pull that right off and finish it. A little bit of fat and connective tissue is okay. Just remember that it, it, you're going to end up eating it. Anything you wouldn't want to eat, you know, consider going the extra mile to get off. So then once you have most of the fat and connective tissue off, anything you wouldn't want to eat, you're just going to, you know, slice it up real quick. Get it into manageable sizes to put through the meat grinder. When you're slicing, you always want to keep your fingertips back. You don't want to cut yourself. And then once you've got them, you know, cubed up, I just put them right into the bowl. And I got a trash can off to the side for the extra trimmings. And we're going to do that until we get, well actually we're going to get 9 pounds. We want 9 pounds so we can get to 10% by adding a pound of pork. When you're chopping, you want to let the blade do the work. When you're pushing really hard, that's when you get into problems. You want your meat really cold. Cold meat's a lot easier to work with, especially when you're going through the grinder. A lot of guys will freeze the fat they're putting through because otherwise it'll clog the grinder. But the smaller pieces you can make and the colder you can keep it, the happier your grinder is going to end up being. You're going to get into some parts where you realized you saved some trim that's just mostly connective tissue. And unless you have a really good fillet knife, it's kind of hard to get that off there, so you know. It all depends what you're willing to spend your time doing. And uh, remember to keep your knife sharp, that'll help. 
But you know, there's not a whole lot you can get off if it's all connective tissue. If you're ever hitting connective tissue and you're having a hard time getting through, just flip your knife sideways, treat it like you're skinning a fish. Sometimes if I'm having a hard time getting a grip, I'll just nail it down there, take my other knife. Good to go. At this point, we've got a mostly full bowl of cut up meat squares. You know, there's still a little fat and connective tissue in there, but it'll be fine. You just want to make sure you have enough that it'll taste good and grind out easy. I'm going to pull our scale up and see what that weighs. I know it's not 10 pounds, but it's about 3 pounds once you subtract the weight of the bowl. So we're going to go ahead and do that three more times basically, and then cut up some pork tenderloin and we'll show you how to grind it. So now that we have our venison all processed out, we went and rinsed off all our tools and our cutting board. You're also gonna want this chopped up into one inch cubes. And remember for this, you want the fat. The whole point of the pork is to have fat on it. So you're just gonna aim for the fattiest parts. You know, like here's a piece of fat. We're just gonna go ahead and throw that fat right in there. Ah, oh, there we go. I right, whatever, slightly over a pound. We're gonna add that to our nine pounds of venison burger to make 10% pork, 90% venison, add that nice fat and flavor. But now that we have our venison and our pork cubed up, we're gonna put it back in the fridge to cool down before we grind. There are a lot of different styles of meat grinder. I just have one that attaches to the front end of my KitchenAid mixer. I've had it in the freezer for the last little while slides on there and then you tighten the bolt back down it's a lot cheaper than buying a standalone grinder and a lot faster than using a hand grinder we're gonna keep everything nice and cold so it's easier to work with and we're gonna feed through you know pieces of this venison and then pieces of the pork so it kind of mixes and then we're gonna go through and mix it all with our hands after the fact it's gonna get loud once I turn the grinder on so you're not gonna hear much but you know I'll let you see some of the process as we grind it So there we go, there, you know, about 10 pounds of ground venison and pork. It's already mixed pretty well, but we're going to go ahead and just sort through it, give it one last little shimmy up. I use a coarse grind because I don't make sausage or anything, I literally just like the burger for meatloaf and hamburgers and venison gravy. There are a lot of guys who will then go through and throw this through another grind to get it ground up even finer. But you can see it's, it comes together real well. The pork mixes in great with the venison. Gives it a nice fat content. Not really increasing your fat content a lot. Make sure you get all the way to the bottom. Mix it up good. Now that I've got it mixed up all good, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my scale and start weighing out portions. For my wife and I, portion is uh, about half a pound. You know, that doesn't mean we're only going to thaw one portion at a time. But when I'm going to thaw for like a single burger, I do about a half pound. So what I'll do is I'll do half pound and one pound portion baggies. I wait to seal all my baggies at the end because uh, my hands are all gross and I don't want my seals to be gross. That was a half pound. Let me show you about what a one pound portion baggie looks like. You know, I don't delete 
the size of the baggie. I don't tear the baggie off my uh, scale weight. It's, I'm not a drug dealer. This isn't cocaine. I'm not super worried about being off by, you know, two grams or whatever a baggie weighs. Okay, so that's about a pound. That's 1.1. So that's what you get. You know, you get a half pound portion and a one pound portion. I'm going to squeeze as much air out of these as I can and then put them in the fridge for a while because my wife and I will eat the the 10 pounds of burger within the next couple weeks before it goes bad if you need to freeze it you know you just push all the air out of it and pop it in your freezer before I put this away though we're gonna go ahead and make ourselves up a burger patty quarter pound burger patty quarter pound burger patty you want to put a good dent in the middle of your burger patties that's how you keep them from swelling in the middle we're gonna take that over to the frying pan just got a little pan out gonna make it quick Putting it over a little bit of medium heat. Going to throw some butter and garlic in the pan. Ooh, my pan might be a little hot. There we go. Lower heat. Butter's melted, not burning. Just going to throw a little garlic in there. Then we're going to go get our venison patty and get a good sear on it. It's a pretty thick burger, so I'm going to go ahead and put a lid on it. Let's give it a flip. Okay, let's kill the heat and check this burger. I'm sure everyone's going to say it's overdone because everyone thinks everything I cook is overdone, but... Let me give it a taste. Try out my burger blend. That's what this is really about. Look how it sticks together. That's why you're adding the extra fat. When you add the extra fat, your burger sticks together. Well, it's really hot. But other than being really hot, it's really good. A perfect burger blend. Still tastes like venison, but having the fat it needs to get the job done. We hope you enjoyed this one. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Click subscribe down there somewhere. You know, we're going to show you a lot more recipes of what you can do with your deer. Thanks for watching. This has been MI Adventure Life. Field to table. Thanks, guys.